Hi Gemini! This is your love reading for the month of May. And I know May's half over, I'm sorry I was sick, but better late than never, yeah? So we are going to look at singles first, couples after. I will put a little thing in the description box below so you know where your reading starts if you're a coupled Gemini. And then if you are somewhere in between, maybe you're not Facebook official, maybe you're in an on-again, off-again relationship, you might want to watch the whole thing and pull the aspects that seem relevant or um, seem to resonate for you from both. So it's for Gemini Sun, Moon, Rising, Venus. It's also if you're spying on a Gemini. Let's get started. For those of you who um, don't know, if you go to my website, and there's like a link in the description box below, you can sign up to win a free reading every month. And so like you just sign up once and you're automatically in the drawing forever style. And so I just wanted to let you know. Okay, that's it. Gemini singles. So what elements of the past are affecting your present ability to attract what it is that you want in relationships? And it's saying, you know what, honestly, you might be attracting people who want the same things as you do. So maybe they want a long-term relationship, but they're just like ideas are totally different about how about how to go about achieving that. Okay. So maybe you want um, to be in a long-term relationship. Okay. And so do all of these people that you're meeting, but they are like, we can't sleep together until we're married. And you're like, I cannot marry somebody unless I know that they're good in the sack because I am not going to be in a relationship with somebody who is like totally sexually weird or they can't pleasure me for the rest of my fucking life. Now, this is the issue that's kind of happening for you this month. Um, and so you might have some communications of chasms about that. You might also be coming across people who um, maybe mislead you, okay? But this will be very familiar to you just because you've experienced people like that in the past that, you know, either they kind of tell you one thing, but they mean another, uh, more to appease you and get what they want, or they lie to you, or they cheat. Um, your breakups of the past, your disappointments of the past, that sort of thing, uh, it does make you a little bit unhappy, right, when you're thinking about these things. And unfortunately, the issue with that is that um, it's hindering you from being able to vibrate at this really high, like, loving energy and attract in the things that you want. So what is it that you actually want right now so we can figure out how to get it? And they're saying... You really want more excitement, more action. Like you're sick of being single. You're done taking a break. Like you are ready for like the things that are karmically owed to you now. Like, you know what? I wasn't a shithead in my past relationships. I deserve an awesome relationship and I want that and I want it fucking now. But the thing is, is outside of saying, I want the things that I know that I deserve, um, you're a little bit confused about what it is that you actually want, okay? What is the most important thing in a relationship for you? Is it good communication? Is it somebody who's handsome? Is it sex? Is it um, somebody who's got their shit together, like financially and career-wise? Do you want somebody who's driven? Do you want somebody who wants kids, somebody who doesn't? Like, you've got to think about all of these things and start sorting them out because the universe doesn't know what to give you. It's like you call and you say, hi, I want a pizza for delivery, click. So what is the, what is the pizza place going to do? Are they going to bring you um, no pizza at all? Are they going to bring you the wrong pizza? Are they going to call you back? Like, what the fuck? So this is the point. Like, if you're trying to draw something in, not only do you have to release the past and open up that heart chakra, but you have to get very specific about the things that you desire in a relationship, okay? Because the universe can't bring you something if it doesn't know what you want. If you don't know what you want, 
then spirit doesn't know what to give you, okay? So what can you expect this month in regards to your love life? It sounds like we already sort of know, right? But they're saying, like, if you focus on the positive, it doesn't actually have to be a challenge. Um, if you can think about what the benefits of getting really clear and specific on the things that you desire are, not only can you find a partner with all of these wonderful things that you're asking the universe for, it will culminate into like a bigger, more bright and beautiful relationship than you ever even fucking imagined possible. They're saying like a balance between reality and like smooth, calm emotions is going to come into play for you. So you know, coming into the end of May, maybe you're not going to meet this person right away because that would be really, really fast, right? But you would be laying the seeds in the groundwork to attract that amazing partner into your life should you take those steps and get really clear and focused on things. And, you know, as long as some of you are still in a negative mindset or like thinking about your disappointments from the past, you can actually use that as a way to figure out what it is that you want. So what was it that I didn't like about this person? I didn't like that they lied. Okay, so then I want two positive opposites. I want somebody who is um, forthcoming and honest. Somebody who um, finds the truth to be of ultimate importance, you know, and write down the positive a aspects of the things that you want and that helps you to really narrow in and focus on the things that you desire as opposed to focusing on the things that you don't want because that pushes love away and it closes down your heart chakra. Okay, so um, what kind of factors will be influencing your love life in the month of May? And they're saying this hope, this... Um, you know, vision, this trust in the universe that you can have the things that you want will very positively impact you. Also nostalgia. Um, you know, so when you're doing this trip backwards into memory lane, like, and you're thinking about the things that went wrong, you might also be thinking about the things that went right. And you can also think about these things and put them on the list of all of the things that you're trying to d draw in or attract for yourself in a love relationship as well, okay? Now, because I don't want you to get the impression that all exes, you know, are villains or anything like that, sometimes relationships just don't work out. So even if your ex isn't a villain, think about the things you loved about them and put them in a list of things that you want with your next partner, with your forever person. Okay, so um, what is the best way to go about finding love this month? And they're saying picturing yourself in um, the kind of relationship that you perceived to be very successful. You know, like, uh, look up hashtag relationship goals and, you know, like get inspiration ship that way. See, you know, what kind of relationship is a successful relationship to you? And what does that look like? Like, maybe you think like your parents have a really amazing relationship. Well, what, are, what makes it amazing? And then put those kind of qualities down on paper as to what it is you're trying to attract and read that list more than once a day. You know, when you wake up and when you go to bed, put it in your purse, read it on your lunch break, whatever. Um, so what, how are other people going to be like perceiving you this month? People who might potentially be interested in you and they perceive you as not changing, um, as maybe being a little bit impatient, but being very direct and assertive. So is this a bad thing or a good thing? Um, it could be both because if these people are not your soulmate, they will find it hard to make like a deep and meaningful emotional attachment to you, uh, which is good because then automatically you can rule them out if, if you don't want to be with them, right? Like, but ultimately they will be able to envision themselves in a very happily ever kind of after scenario with you. If you are very aligned in the things that you want, if it is the kind of person that you're trying to manifest. Now, um, some people might perceive you to not be very financially secure, and that could actually be a reality, um, maybe because of a divorce or a breakup, maybe because you lost a job or something like that. Um, so, Ultimately, though, these are not things that they are going to mention to you, but they are things that could maybe influence their uh, ability to sort of want to reach out to you or whatever, or to envision themselves with you potentially, or because, you know, these, a lot of people are looking for a relationship that is stable and solid. And so um, they might wait to communicate with you until they view you this way. So just something to keep in mind. Um, what is the best thing that you can do for yourself in order to draw in this love? I think we kind of already talked about it, but I want to recap here. And they say, like, making 
like a vision, like a vision board would be good, but like holding a vision in your heart and your mind about what a happily ever after looks like, thinking long term, understanding that you don't get to control how and when that comes through, but trusting that the universe will bring it to you and it might show up for you a lot quicker than you think possible. For some of you, this will show up in August even, but for those of you who have not moved on from the past and are not putting the work in, um, you could still end up in a relationship that is solid and is committed and it's long term and you stay together forever, but it will not be as happy and full as of love as those who do follow the guidance. So that is singles. Now, coupled relationships. What's up for Gemini couples? What kind of things from the past, either past relationships or things that have happened in this current relationship are affecting your relationship in May? And they're saying, you know what, honestly, um, it's hard to connect to your partner in a very deep and emotional way this month because of disappointments, um, because of potential cheating, hurt, resentment that stems from that, and even outside things like for example, maybe you and your partner have a good relationship and, you know, you want to get married, but uh, your future mother-in-law says, no, no, I'm not going to permit this. I won't go to the wedding. And, you know, it's putting strain on your relationship. Ultimately, it makes it feel unstable. And so you're trying to work on the details of, like, how to get things moving in a positive direction, like how to make it more stable. But... Um, you know, it's it's the big labor. And so any elements like that, any disappointments or things from the past, like any time that you felt like you couldn't truly commit or um, connect either to your partner um, is going to sort of negatively impact you in the month of May, to be honest. So how is it that we can change this energy and sort of get the things that we want out of our relationship this month? And it's to understand that at the end of the day, you both have the same end goal in mind. So, you know, maybe you both want to be together forever. And um, you're in that mother-in-law situation and it's like, okay, so if the end goal is that we both want to be together forever, like why? Why is it so important for one of us to feel like we need to get married if it upsets the apple cart? Like we can get married when, you know, my mother-in-law dies and, you know, do us then. But in the meantime, we are fully committed to each other. So what's the fucking difference? You know, things like that are where you want to focus on that end goal that you have in common and not bicker and fight about the things in between on how you achieve that. Okay. Because ultimately it says like in bickering and fighting about things, um, on how to approach things, for example, maybe you both want to put money away for retirement, but one of you wants to put away like drastically more than the other. The point is, is you both want the same thing. You both want to put money away. So be able and willing to bend and things because your sex life will um, ultimately sort of shut down in May if you're not able to do that. You need to make sure that you're not coming across as bitchy or bossy this month because it will very much negatively impact your sex life. So um, what can you expect ultimately this month in your relationship? You can expect to feel confident and hopeful about the direction that it's heading and you can expect for things to become more stable and organized and balanced and predictable and, and sort of healthy in your relationship. Um, it doesn't feel like things are moving forward, especially not as fast or as quickly in the direction that you want them to. But like I said, you are still a couple. You are still together. You still care for each other. You still want the same thing. So focusing on that thing that you have in common about what you want as opposed to the details of how to get there is going to be the very most important thing for you. So what kind of factors are influencing your love life in the month of May? And they're saying, you know, this idea of happily ever after is influencing. It gives you something to look forward to and to be hopeful about. You're currently like in this sort of um, energy where circumstances outside of your control that really have little to do with your relationship but affect your relationship. For example, one of you loses a job or um, maybe your car gets stolen or, um, you know, maybe other people have a lot of shit to say about your relationship circumstances outside of your control that really have little to do with your relationship are affecting your relationship this month. So just focus on what it is that you need to do to be happy and to maintain that. Focusing on that main goal that you have in common. Okay. Um, so what is the best course of action? We've kind of already talked about this, but try to make sure that things are fun, sexy, light, exciting, spontaneous. Um, you know, really putting a focus on the things that you're passionate about, but it's very, very important for you 
to figure out what exactly is important to you and why, right? So kind of like I was talking about, like, let's for say, for example, in that same example of marriage, and that might not be what the issue is for all of you, you're going to know how to take this. But what I'm saying is, is it's like, is the wedding actually the important thing? Or is the important thing that we love each other and want to commit to each other for life, right? Like really narrowing in that focus. Now, how are you supposed to narrow in that focus? Easier said than done, right? And they say, it's not about really changing what you're doing, changing what you're talking about, changing what you're manifesting. It's more about being patient and just waiting and being okay with the time passing. They're saying, yeah, it's hard to be patient. Yeah, you want things to happen quick. But um, it doesn't mean that you should lack like enthusiasm, you know, for your partner. And it doesn't mean that you shouldn't be spontaneous and fun with them because then you're putting everything that you have sort of at risk or you're going to be creating issues where there don't need to be any. You can balance all of these things. You can be patient and still have fun and appreciate and have your partner and have an exciting and passionate sex life this month. But it's your it's your decision to do that, okay? So really get focused on the things that you want. Not only can you achieve all of the things that you want, but you know, a more beautiful and loving relationship than you even thought possible. But it does require you to balance out not only your emotions, but making them um sort of work in a practical and real setting for your relationship. So what happens if you don't follow this guidance? this guidance this month, they're saying, well, um, if you don't follow the guidance, you might be focusing a lot more on work. Um, you might be stuffing your feelings. You might come across as selfish to your partner. Um, and as a result, uh, your partner's perspective might change and they might not want the same things that you do. So there is a little bit of a danger there. Now, if you do follow this guidance, what can you expect? Well, you can expect much of what I said here, um, and it will be a little bit dramatic, but in a good way. Like any arguments or fights or struggles that you have um, are kind of like tearing down old belief patterns, old systems, old ways of doing things in order to build up stronger new foundations for your relationship that ultimately make it more healthy in the long run. So pay attention to those details. Work hard at figuring out what it is that you care about most and why, and then be patient. So I will see you again in June. Love and light. Mwah. Thanks so much for watching this video and getting all the way to the end of it. I really appreciate your support. If you are interested in other videos, click here. If you are interested in subscribing, go ahead and click here. Hit that notification bell so that you get alerted to when new videos come out and also when I do surprise live streams. And then if you're interested in winning a free 20 minute video uh, reading personally every month, go ahead and click right here. Mwah!